Welcome back, investigators, to the lucky die. Previously, Lafian formulates a plan for negotiations. Ral sends Tio to find Hagen. Squash tries to earn good graces with their host, and Sultana helps out some lost souls. The heroes find two thieves on Hester's land. Two thieves who reveal that they work for a peddler of rumors they call the mistress. A being who wants access to a well that allows them to look into the physical plane. Because even in Bellum, information is power. How different will Hagen be from when Raoul knew him? What information could the mistress broker to our heroes? And will Hester be receptive to our hero's proposal? I guess we're about to find out. Welcome back to the Lucky Die. You find yourself in Hester's homestead. It's exactly as you left it, maybe 20, 25 minutes ago, 30 minutes. How long did we do the last episode for? (laughs) 40 ish. Yeah. Um, Half now. Let's say half an hour ago. Before we go and gates with um, Hester, should we wait until morning or should we wake him up with the, the ambush? You saw how Zoltana was with a uh, lack of sleep. Maybe it's best we leave the orc Yeah, not great. To sleep. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll take the pip squeaks to the barn and hey. I'm not in squat. I'm not in character voice. <clears throat> I'll take the pip squeaks back to the barn and hey. we can um, <laughs> meet up in the morning. Yeah, I don't Feelings. think you can call them pip squeaks. Uh, you're a Just, gnome. I'm what? a dwarf. We're all kind of pip squeaks here. I'm. I'm. I'm the in-between size between the two of you. You can't do this. <laughs> Fine. Uh, just try to make sure that Hester doesn't, like, run off and bust us in there. Like, just wake up when he wakes up. We'll see you guys in about seven-ish hours. Sleep good. Sure. Okay. The other two, like, wave nervously goodbye. And then just follow Squash wherever Squash is going. Um, guess say that wherever you want to settle down for the evening, Squash, like you, yeah. the three of you will be totally safe. Um, uh, until they just... kill you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good They question. just want you to fall asleep, Squash. <laughs> just close your eyes. That is a good Time point. I had but... not even for a second assumed that they would like stab me in my sleep. <laughs> Living <Please>. people. <laughs> stab, stab, stab. I we don't just eat grain. Now. <laughs> Call us pip speak now, motherfucker. <laughs> I haven't eaten fl- uh, unmutated flesh in years. Ah, uh, no. Um, Demon flesh is gross, but the I'll living. Tell you, what, you can, <laughs> you can find out. You can, you can rest peacefully, and we'll find out if you wake up in the morning. How about that? <laughs> Your bones would be very valuable because if you think about it. Because no one really dies here. There's no bones here. If you can think, figure out how to get bones here, someone could like make a really cool like costume or something with them, and then they could <laughs> oh, be like okay, the wait. king and have, you know, <laughs> Neil, the, the you're, bones you're, you're, here. Oh, mate. Your trains of thoughts and the derailment—they <laughs> are always a joy to experience. <laughs> Just a proposition. Right. <laughs> let's Something let's roll to forward about. to morning. Yes. Um, squash, you wake up. So I guess that's a worry um, negated. Um, the are three they? of you who I'm assuming are in the homestead, you also wake up after your refreshment or you manage to get your meditation through fine. Right. Um, Hester is up pretty early, um, but I'm going to say y'all can have your long rests. Go ahead. You may press your buttons. Yay. Um, Oops. And oh. Yeah, Hester. Uh oh, uh oh! I forgot about the booping. Oops. How do we do the acid attack, Nee? I, I rolled a one. 
You do remember you have potions to drink, right? I do, but I specifically also remember only getting like seven of them. Yeah, as and uh, I think that he was intending on not. You, I think that I went over this already a little bit, but yeah, yeah I'll have to did. figure You're out in a previous episode. Limit what uses of them. Yeah, I'll have to keep track of that. Um, and think about that. But um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, you guys don't really have that many days left, um, <laughs> so you can definitely ration them out. It's doable. Yeah, he um, just didn't have any exhaustion at the moment, so he didn't want to start yep. yet. Um, so. so as Hester is uh, getting up and like bustling around, um, beginning to make some like food for himself, um, those of you who are awake slash meditating, and those of you who are waking up, you hear the sounds of Rao just kind of flailing about, and you hear a lot of gurgling. Um, Rao, please resolve an acid attack against yourself, and you have a level of exhaustion. Damn it! That's not a good way to start the morning. Not a good way to start the morning in hell. We used to do this where we start at one HP. Are you sure it's a attack? Uh, I know we've done it both ways because we've been in. <laughs> I, I'm. Various, mm, I'm going to say you're in Bellum, and I have a feeling that in Ral's mind, Bellum is his task. Um, so I. I will allow you to start at one HP if you prefer. If I prefer. If you think that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense for real. Since Otherwise, we, resolve attack against yourself. Since we've done it both ways, I'm going to roll a D2. Okay. Oh, God. Uh, one, one is at one hit point and two is at, like, less whatever it is. That's another one. What was that? So, Ralph starts at one hit point. Okay. Yeah, we. That, uh, that's a fine way to do it. I know we've done it both ways. So, yeah, I think we can just determine in the morning which which is which. If it makes story sense for you to have rested, you have your health, and if you are in a shitty place like Bellum, you don't. Um, all right, okay. Um, yeah. So Zoltana and um, Lafian, you obviously spot this. Uh, putting a pillow under his head, right? That's how you do this. <laughs> it's like a seizure. Put a pillow, blankets. It will melt. <laughs> uh, in in a in fairly fluent dwarvish, um, Hester says, "What is wrong with him?" Oh, I actually understand dwarvish. Yeah, you should do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you both should understand dwarvish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> responds back in dwarvish. I guess he's got. A disease that only dragonborn get and only certain ones get. And he's very far, far along and, according to the god of death, should have died quite a while ago. Oh, so it's okay for you to speak dwarvish, but not for me to speak elvish? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that. It's it's the accent, Zalzana. My elvish accent is impeccable. Right. <laughs> Perfect answer. <laughs> What do we do to help him? Healing, mostly. Well, we have to find a dragon and get its heart in order to cure him. Well, that's a that's a whole other thing. Yeah, you see his eyes. Sorry, his eye go a little white, and he's like, "I don't believe you'd ever want to meet the dragons that are here." I'm sorry, there are dragons here. Find a dragon every single time that he passes out like this. No, 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 <laughs> no. No, uh, just the one time. Just the one time. The the cure requires oh, a dragon heart and the whole right. thing. That's that is a little bit more understandable. Right. Uh, Zoltana, do you want to get him? Should I get him? Do we both want to do it? Seems more effective when we do it together. We can do it together. Power of teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> I mean, y yes. Uh, team. All right, go for it. Do what you need to do. All right, we do the fusion dance. Do the fusion <laughs> dance. Um, apply the magics. As you both um, channel your psychic energy through Zoltana's absolute rage, um, 
you begin to see the kind of wounds that are on his throat begin to slowly close up a little bit. You see the acid production just slow down and he just seems to become conscious and a little bit more aware of his surroundings. As you heal him for, let me do the numbers. 38. No, I don't know about that. 57 hit points. Oh, okay. Because you did the fusion dance. Oh, perfect. (laughs) That was the, the friendship healing. Yeah. Rob, you you good? Mm, yeah. Okay. Rob looks Maybe, um, like frustrated, like he's trying to keep calm, but he's more like <laughs> just kind of mad, I guess, that this has happened. Maybe tomorrow night or tonight, I guess. Um, do whatever it is you need to do so that this doesn't happen while we're here. Yeah, yeah, I'm. We got seven of the potions, so yeah. Okay. I just gotta make it last, you know. I wonder if you could dilute those with water or something. I don't know. If we see Kythea again, could ask if maybe that's something that could be reproduced. I don't think you can split the. I don't know. There's the sand. Yeah, it, you yeah, know? you yeah, you kind of see like each of the the potion vials have like one like speck of sand floating in each of them, uh, and they kind of change through multicolors. What if we sand split the, the grain of sand? Or is that going to be like splitting an atom? Don't be ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, unless unless you stop him, Hester is just going to bumble around in the morning and then he's going to make his way up to look after the horses. Um, well, so Zoltana, you're going to interrupt him. Zoltana, do you yeah. want to, do you want, you want to talk to him first? Or do you want me to bring it up? Or how do you, if you could talk first, that would be great for me. Okay. Cause you're I, more diplomatic. Wing sure, this. Okay, sure. Uh, sure. Uh, no, no, I got, I got you. I got you. You want, you want me to do the hype men thing? I got, it, I got it. Yeah. Diplomacy wingman me. Uh, Hester, Sorry, before uh, before you get too entrenched in your your daily uh, daily affairs, I have to look after the horses. What do you want? Uh, well, we so last night, uh, you know, as as it were, you'd uh, asked for Squash to be doing his whole thing, and uh, we had been talking with him and cutting to the chase, basically. Uh, Zoltana wanted to have a bit of a discussion with you regarding uh, some discoveries that we made along the way. I wanted to bring it up to Zoltana as being a little groggy, you know how it is in the morning. I understand. I am not too great with morning either. Understandable. I had to be woken up very early every morning, so I kind of got used to it, but... Well, in any case, um, I don't know if you'd rather have the discussion in here or if you would rather um, at Let the table. Let me tend to my horses first. I have to make sure that they are fed, and I have a feeling you're probably going to be talking my ear off. I can help you with the horses if you want. Uh, he looks generally like a little bit of taken aback, and then he nods and smiles, and in Dwarvish he says, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, it's no problem. I'm great with horses. I, I used to own one. <laughs> um, I'm also great at catching mice. <laughs> yeah, there's three of them out in the barn. Yeah, Hester basically t- takes your your assistance, um, and it's mostly just mucking out the stables, um, ensuring that the horses have like the 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 first round of food. That the emu has their first round of like oats and such like. Um, yeah, and that they're kind of like brushed down and ready for the day. And he opens the barn up properly. He doesn't notice wherever Squash is hiding um, because he's not really looking for him because he doesn't care. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, um, yeah, he, yeah, as as you're uh, as you're kind of like making your way back, um, Grim says again in um, nope. in Dwarvish, so you can understand. You uh, sorry, you- uh, Hester says in Dwarvish, so that you can understand. He says, "So, what is this discovery that you are talking about?" 
So, Hesta, I'm uh, I'm noticing that you're having a problem with someone stealing your grain, right? Correct. Well, I uh, I found out who it was, and it was a, a who, and I uh, I talked to them. Are they dead? No. <laughs> oh, I'm guessing if you talk to them, they probably did not die. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I didn't kill them. Uh, I used to work with a group that helped those in need, so I assumed if they were stealing, they were probably in need, and I decided to find out what was going on. Um, from what they told me, they have a situation that they find themselves in, which is why they keep breaking onto your property and stealing your grain, but they say it's their last resort to to take your grain, if that is a consolation. <laughs> so what is the situation that they find themselves in? So essentially, the story is this. These two guys are only stealing from you because of their mistress. She's been sending them to get grain for folks she looks after. And more importantly, these guys, they just really want to use you well. They're good dudes. They just really want to see their families, which I fully understand personally. I know what it's like to miss someone who's gone and you can never see or speak to again. But, you know, from the other side of it. So anyway, I know what they did is wrong and they know it too. But I have a proposition, right? Because these guys are not bad people and they don't have any ill will against you. And they're just doing a job, right? So if you're willing to be lenient and forgive them and not kill them with your death horses and also let them use you well every once in a while to see their families and possibly get rumors from the material plane for their mistress, uh, I'm willing to give you this pocket dimension mead. And Zoltana takes out the mead and holds it up for Hester to see. <laughs> you can consider it compensation. Zoltana holds the mead up to camera or uh, rather to Hester. <laughs> Holding it up to the camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think this is about the right time for Squash and uh, two amigos to come out of hiding. <laughs> I don't think that's a good huh? idea. <laughs> Zoltana hears him and is like, wait a hand. No, 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 no. <laughs> Squash pops up from behind a, like a, a pile of hay. <laughs> you wouldn't need two horses to kill them. The horses have knives. You wouldn't have to make the horses tear them apart. The no. horses can just stab them. Why do you keep people from the well? Uh, <laughs> that jumping lot. What? What? <laughs> I'm making. I'm making a point, and then I'm asking a question unrelated. Uh, I'm gonna say he didn't notice you appearing because it's fine that you're here. I'm just like leaning. They against were making the their way back resting. towards the homestead anyway. Yeah, they were. They, they were making their way back to the homestead anyway. Um. Oh hi, Ral. He. Looks at Sultana and back in Orkish, um, because there's a translator here now. Um, he says, It completely depends on who this mistress is. Trading rumors, even in Bellum. It can cause a lot of strife and damage to the people living in the material plane, so in the physical plane, and here on Berlin. I would have to know who she is before I agree to that. No, I, I fully understand that. The well is not... You have to promise me that you'll spare their lives. If they are working for this mistress, I will have her name, and I will spare their lives. Okay, I'll call them out and they can tell you themselves. Uh, but just remember what you promised, okay? Hey guys, it's safe to come out now. <laughs> oh, merry man! <laughs> yeah. Uh, you you see them both like pop their head out like from wherever a squash and that are like, hiding. A squash is gonna take pains in not associating himself with the other small people as to not. <laughs> Associate his own Squash awfulness. just doesn't appear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Pushes Squ the other two out. Um, oh, damn, there's someone who speaks, oh, understands all languages. Walk, walk um, around the other side of the bard. Hey, what's up, guys? I was taking a leak. What did I miss? <laughs> do, 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 walk away again. Um, he looks at the, the two that have stepped out and he says to them, the name of your mistress and I will allow you to leave with your lives and my grain. And they look at one another and they say, 
Her name is Fex. She's at the port. Sorry, she's at the vortex. Are you sure we can leave? If you do not come back again without me having spoken to your mistress. If you do, I will kill you. You won't even see it coming. And with that, the pair of them kind of look a little bit wide-eyed and they piss off. I guess that's the best we could have asked for. I think that's a fair deal. Bargain was struck. Diplomacy won. I will speak with this mistress. Oh man, now I feel like I should get a deal for Fex too. And I don't even I'm know. I'm beginning what. to run off, rub off on you. It's fantastic. I'm, I'm proud of gonna you. I'm going to say at this point, if uh, Laffin and Squash want to be like in the area, um, they can be there and part of the conversation. It's totally fine. I've been um, part of it. Get... Yeah, you're around. Um, he turns. Uh, Hester turns and looks at um, Ral, and he says. I believe that you have questions. What? The, what was that about? What did I have questions about? The well. Remind me. The well. Oh. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. The people at the Vortex seem to have a community. Maybe. Sounds like. Yes. It is rather large. And, um... Okay. Hmm. So you're protecting the well, basically. Not particularly. Did you make the well? No. The well has existed for a very long time. Hmm. Around many of the wells, there are these protected areas. Those who have become more demon than they are person. Is that the bubble They thing? cannot. Correct. I do not wish to become like the demons. I like to remember who I am. So that when the armies of Berlin are once called, I will be able to answer and not a demon. The well. It is... The well is already protected from demons. Yes. Mm, then you protect it from the living. It's because you're protecting your things and your safety. I protect my home because people equal death. My horses... My mounts, my animals, they do not equal death. We understand each other. We care. Out there in the vortex, the rest of Berlin, nobody cares for each other. No, but you're keeping them from something they might care about. The people they left behind. The well, it is a two-edged sword. It can be great for checking on your loved ones. But it can also completely rob you of your senses. Imagine hundreds of years looking at your family, your loved one, especially when you live for centuries. And he kind of gives a sigh eye to um, Sultana and to Lafian. I'm not going to pretend that I know more about what's going on here than you do. But... I can understand why you want the well to be monitored. But I don't think you should be keeping people from it altogether. And if there's a way that the civilization that has happened here could make those decisions and monitor the well, you're. I just worry you might be keeping people from a good thing. I have trouble seeing the well as a bad thing, but I do understand that it should be monitored. People who stare too long into the well, it drives them mad. With fear, loneliness, anger, 
It is awful not to be able to reach out for the ones that you love and watch them struggle knowing there is nothing that you can do. We are all here prone to violence. And pain makes you do ridiculous things. I do not wish that to be around me. But this is the only safe place for my horses and me. I will speak with this mistress. I will speak with the leader of the Vortex. I will do this because you have asked of it. You're protecting a good thing. It needs protection. But it is useful. And a good thing. It can be. But it can also be used for our enemies. I don't know. Just don't kill anyone coming to seek you, I guess, is what I worry you're doing. He kind of has like a half smile. He clearly has. Um, <laughs> Trespass is short on sight sort of thing. Um, I will make arrangements. If I do not like their terms, then they shall not come. We all wish to be going to Red Rock Town so that you can continue with your task, whatever it may be. Uh, yeah. Sooner is better. I believe that sooner is better. We should probably go. Agreed. Piece of, <laughs> your piece of work, you know that, Hester. Say that to my face, little man. <laughs> oh, you heard this one? Okay. <laughs> Squash oh, shit, thinks yeah, that... really loudly. <laughs> <laughs> Hester thinks real loud. Um, Hester prepares three horses. Sultana having Alecto. Hester has his own horse. The biggest, tallest horse. Something about they're clearly smaller horses. Both of them still have um, the kind of horns at the front. One of them dripping with ice, another dripping with fire. Um, and he he offers one to Lafian and one to Ral. Oh, I don't know how to ride them, but uh, I do have someone that might meet up with us at some point. I sent uh, Tio out to find them if he can. There is another. Someone from here. Yes. Someone I trust. I shall ask if another is willing to ride. And he goes over to like some of the other like horses and some of the slightly smaller ones. And he looks back around and he says, How big are we talking? Like me. Sultana, like you. Okay. And he goes over to um, some of the other horses and you can see that as he lays his hand like kind of on their like um, nose area and kind of like whispers quietly to them. He's speaking yet another language. Um, Raoul, you'd recognize this as like something druidic, I guess. And you see that he's communing and talking with them and the horse kind of like acknowledges and agrees to travel with. Thanks. I I, I can't ride them, but on my own. Um it is okay. I don't know. I don't know if Hagen can, but probably maybe he's learned Hagen. a lot since he's been here. So maybe. Hagen. Hagen. Speak to me of this Hagen. What? There are many Hagens here. Oh. Speak to me of this one. Uh, he is white scales and so tall and has a tail, you know, all that stuff. Like me. Um, came here when he was pretty young. Came here when? He was young. Yes. Um, yeah, he was Your young. Your friend. He is at the vortex. Do you know him? You see um, Hester kind of like half nod. I have heard of him. What have you I heard? I have glimpsed him once. You what? 
I have glimpsed him once or twice when I have had need to go to the vortex. If you are looking for the army of Benham, he is the person you wish to speak with. What? Oh. How is it? It's been... He was... Young. I know he's learned a lot, but he's in charge of all that. Time does not flow the same here as it does for you. No, I My know. sister Rei has led me to believe that time does not travel the same for the four of you, as long as she stays where she is. But time is very accelerated here. What may have been a year for you, probably more, more like a century. Yeah. Huh. The leaders of the Vortex, they do change frequently, but as far as I am understanding, last I was at the Vortex, it was him. Is it a dangerous job what he's doing? Is Do they go through people because they are transforming faster or whatever? There is a great degree of death, yes. Hmm. Well, hopefully he's still okay. We can always check on him. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> there is someone I have to check on before I leave. And then we shall be good to go. Okay. Thanks. Um, the horses are essentially all saddled up and ready to go. Um, you see that he goes to one of the far reaches inside the barn and you see just kind of like this very faint blue glow and then he comes back and he gets up on his horse. We are ready to go. Are you expecting me to ride with one of my friends or... Is it all right if I have the rat riding with me? <laughs> if Mulgar accepts him, that is entirely her choice. I'm assuming Mulgar is the fourth horse? Yeah, it's Lafian's horse. Oh, it's Lafian's horse. Is that the fire one or the ice one? Uh, you have the ice one. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Squaz is going to do his best uh, he's been around these creatures now for a couple of hours uh, he's going to do his best to try to like um, comfort it like just make it apathetic towards him take a take an animal handling check I feel confident that this isn't one of your skills <laughs> yes I think you're one <laughs> woohoo <laughs> That's only an eight. As you go forward to, like, get the horse to accept you, um, she kind of just, like, turns away and she flicks you with her tail as she, like, walks on. <sighs> well, I'll tell you right now, Hester, we'll be much slower if I'm on feet. Do you have anybody who would, like, let me ride them? He looks down at you. And he kind of, like, up on the horse, he leans over, he grabs you by the scruff of your neck, and he just puts you in front of him. Okay. This way. If you do anything I do not like, I can just knock you off in an instant. <clears throat> Squash doesn't reply. <laughs> Smart boy. Um, and with that, the group of you... Begin to make your way across the desert. Am I riding a fucking horse, Fee? <laughs> What's going on? How do I ride a horse? 
<laughs> I'm assuming they're like uh, super intelligent, where it's just like you just yeah. sit. <laughs> but like grabbing yeah. on, to, just like <laughs> hugging it the best I can to stay on. <laughs> <laughs> Like there's there's like the saddle and there's the reins on it, but you're just holding on to it. Um, <laughs> um, the horse you're riding is a little bit more fiery than some of the other horses, um, but um, Hester assures you that this one is calm and patient with you, and you just need to either hold on to the strap, hold on to the pommel. Um, the horse will do most of the work, so long as you don't, you know, start wiggling too much on her. Yeah. Yeah, Brawl, Brawl is feeling his exhaustion, so he's kind of slumped over yeah. already and is trying to make this more of a hug than a, I'm slumping over and you're just like <laughs> carrying a sack of weight. As, yeah, as as the group of you make your way, like you, you would feel your horse like beginning to like neigh and um, you would hear Hester begin to like speak back to it and keep things calm. And you understand they're having a conversation about you. <laughs> Oh. Um, and about the fact they need to help you so Hester slows the pace down and he you know he pulls his spear a little bit more to his side um, he's clearly becoming more aware of his surroundings uh, because you need to travel at a bit of a slower rate to um, account for your uncomfortableness but otherwise your folks make it fairly easily it's probably half a day's ride um, and you do see creatures coming towards you, but the horse that has no passenger just often chases down the things that are coming after you. You see the horse like bend its head down and skewer whatever creatures are coming, and you see it just disappear in a dark mist or a very bright white mist or a red mist. And the creature turns back around and the horse comes back to join your party, galloping much, much faster because you guys are obviously slow and easy to catch up with. Ahead of you, you see that there is kind of like a canyon. The rocks around are this kind of like very dark red and light red and and almost pink in colour. There's lots of different hues and levels going through it. You see that there are, as you go into this canyon, it narrows massively. Sorry, it narrows quite a lot until you have to go single file. You can look up above you, you can see that there are these walkways that have been carved into some of the rocks you can see that as you go forward and further along you see these different platforms have been dug at different heights along this canyon which is now 40 50 feet in height you can see that there are large openings where clearly as you pass you can see these small kind of rooms inside you look through other ones with very narrow passageways that clearly open up to much larger caverns but you can't quite see inside there is evidence that this clearly used to be a place where people lived. But now it is nothing but silence. There is nothing but large swaths of dust and sand on the ground. As you go further into this red rock town, the canyon widens out, but only ever so slightly, so you can walk maybe three horses abreast. You can see that up above you, these different walkways that have been carved are now so often as thick and wide and at so many different heights that you only have shafts of reddish light coming down between them. And this is where he stops you. You will find the entrance to the underground passage through that place there. And he points at one of these kind of very narrow openings that clearly opened into a much, much wider hall. There haven't been many openings for a while now. He says... You'll find a town within this section. Houses that have been built and long left behind. My best bet for you, if you wish to travel below the surface, you'll need to find the absolute, the obsolete tombs of heroes. There is a secret passage there. This should lead you down into the death itself. This cavern that you are describing, most likely through there. Okay, are you going to wait here? I shall wait here. There are many things that are probably tracking you and following you. Oh. And with those two thieves that went back to the vortex. 
a lot more people will know you're around here. Do you think there's something out there hunting us because we're alive or because Correct. They... It's a fair assessment. You think we made a mistake letting Truffle and Logan uh, go? Correct. I should have should have slaughtered them on the spot. They're getting supplies for the vortex. The vortex is where That's... Hagen is. Why are you withholding supplies from the town instead of working and helping with them? I do work. I know, I see you work. They but work. I just wonder too. if you are only serving yourself with your work. I am serving my chance to fight and not lose myself. Nobody has the right to tell me I cannot do that. Not even you. You should go. Before I break my vow to Grimsh, go. And with that, he kind of puts a hand on the back of Squash's neck and just doesn't exactly dump you on the ground, but it's not quite as heavy as you think it might have been. I definitely assumed he threw me off as soon as he stopped the horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Um, let's get going then. We'll see you soon, Hester. And Squash is going to start going in the general direction he waved for the obsolete Tomb of Heroes. Um, you see the horses and um, Hester, they kind of like spread out along this canyon. Um, you see that Hester basically kind of half jumps and leaps up to the first balcony or walkway that he can and pulls himself up and just, you can tell that they have some sort of maneuvers between them and they seem to be working as a group to figure out like, hey, if something's coming, if it's not, um, they're clearly seeing up a defensive something here. Um, the four of you enter the Red Rock Town proper. As you go inside, it is still baking hot. It's it's still very warm. It's not as hot as the day previously when everything was out to scald you in the sun. Um, it's still pretty warm though, even inside this cavernous town. And much like when you entered, much like when you entered Draneth. You can see that what opens up before you is a massive cavern. You can't see massively well. Like, there is still a huge amount of darkness here and not all of you can see, you know, beyond 120 feet or such like. But you see many, many houses arrayed before you. Some of them are quite tall, some of them quite small, some of them very wide. You can tell that a lot of these places have been carved into the side of this cavern itself and it's clearly been worked. This isn't a something put up in in haste this has taken time and planning it is eerily quiet there's no breath of air in here whatsoever there's no movement of anything each of your steps echo very loudly around this cavern you can see the streets are empty you can see that there are what looks like maybe old wagons that have overturned but the metal here has rusted and fallen apart the wood long long rotted away as you creep forward a little you can see ahead of you what looks like a very large temple it has a very big dome on top and two smaller pillars tell that there are many steps that lead up to it off to the side of that you see houses and homes that aren't like the others as if someone has knocked down the existing structures and built something very ad hoc very much like they don't know how to build a shelter but they're making do and you see a series of like 20 of these small homes what strikes you about these is that the pathways and the roads between these small houses are covered in what looked like ice Are you all approaching stealthily, or are you running ahead? I don't think we're. Ex- I don't think we're expecting too much aggression here. So my assumption is that we're just going about carefully, but not like super stealthily. Uh, what do you guys think? Okay. I think aggression is the first thing I'm expecting on the uh, plane of let's go fight the demons. 
<laughs> so far, we've gotten into zero fights in Bellum. I'm not expecting Well, now that you said something. Anything. So I'm just walking, and I'm tired, so I'm not walking fast. <laughs> but I'm walking. Place faces past, and I'm homebound. Mm-hmm. Did you say there was like a temple on uh, the dome building? Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, there's like a domed temple with uh, steps leading up to it and, and, and pillars. And that's what you see kind of from a distance. Um, off to one side of that, there is like a smaller, it's like a smaller village within the town that is clearly constructed differently. And yeah. that is covered in a lot of ice. Um, um, I'm going to say slightly further off in the distance, there is also um, kind of like a very tall building that is surrounded by lots and lots of pillars. Um, do you guys want me to scout ahead, or do we want to just approach this as a unit? That depends whether we want to go into the temple and see if perhaps this is the place, or if there are residents here and whether or not they're amicable to talking. The fact that there is ice down here baffles me. It is sweltering hot, and there is ice. That is a bit of a contradiction. I touch the ice. Is the ice itself? No, bro, no, we. <laughs> I want to touch the ice. You want to go and touch the ice? I want to I'm gonna, like, make a snowball. Are you being stealthy? Are you just rocking up there? Um. Roll, roll, no, roll, roll. What? Qu- quietly, quietly. There might be people. <laughs> We don't know if they're good. In the ice? They might be living in the ice. I will run away from them and they will be slipping and not be able to catch up. No, that's not... Let me find. If they made the ice to... <laughs> you go over and touch the ice. Are you touching ice on a building, on the floor? Probably just on the floor. Just lean over and see if it's yeah. like you... radiating heat or something weird. Um, As soon as you put your hand in the area where the cold, or sorry, where the ice is, you just feel like a like a chilling presence. Um, Mm. It just feels cold as soon as you put your hand over that like particular area. Um, Yeah, that's that's kind of what you got. the The ice the the ice on the ground is not particularly thick. It's like like someone's dropped like a really big ass snowflake on the ground that just doesn't seem to be melting away. The ice is cold. It's very cooling after the extreme heat you've had the last two days. Who said that? I'm going to lay down on the ice. Ro- no, You're going to what? Sorry? Sit down on the ice. I'm going to lay, lay down. down. Roll. Oh, okay. Roll. That's <laughs> fine. You're going to get up it's and you're going to leave nice all work. your scales behind. It's going to be just frozen to it. What? Roll, we're in a burning hellscape underground in a cavern and find a mysterious town that has ice all over the place and the first thing that it's your like, instinct tells no you one here. is to lay down i'm tired there's no one here <sighs> could everyone take a perception check please yes, yes please <laughs> <laughs> nobody's here perception check <laughs> 22 28 fuck you <laughs> love you too baby <laughs> uh Rob, what did you get? I'm not taking a perception check. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm the one lying on the ground. <laughs> there's a ceiling. Fair. There's there's a cave. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna see anything in the ceiling. Uh Sultana? I am not on I got any. as high alert as All everyone right. else, clearly. <laughs> Zoltana's like that ice is pretty comfy. <laughs> I wonder if I could fight the ice. <laughs> <laughs> fight club god fight club uh, no I, I couldn't have a god fun. fight club it. because the first um, rule of fight club isn't that don't talk about fight club I wouldn't be able to do anything but talk about god fight club because it's rad yeah. yeah all I want to um, do is talk about it for those of you who got 20 and above um, <laughs> on your perception check yes you notice that there is what looks like a void that is roughly three foot in diameter. It's kind of misty at the edges, and you can see these even darker tendrils um, coming from it, um, like a like a hairball that's floating around, but made of darkness. You can see in the very center of this, there's like a couple of very small, tiny little lights, and it's 
basically turned around one of these buildings, has seen the four of you, five of you, Electo, um, and then just kind of has zipped up that road and turns around behind another building. You saw that, right? Yeah, unfortunately, yes. Um, have we ever heard about anything like this? It's ice. Ooh. What do you mean? Uh, do, do they not know what ice is? It's ice. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say this thing is floating, uh, like off the ground, just a, a wee yeah. bit. Um, oh, mate. Uh, maybe Arcana, maybe history. Anything you think you could argue with me at this point? Uh, Arcana? That's an yeah. 18. Yeah, that sounds like a magical studies class sort of thing. <laughs> uh, no, you don't know what this is. Okay. 21. Um, in what? Arcana. Okay. Um, you would know that this is kind of like a, a byproduct of dark magic. Oh. Is it aggressive? Um, it tends to be around... Those people who use questionable magics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, such as perhaps resurrection magics, I would style perhaps be I'm suggesting gonna, I'm gonna a rift. Mm, no, it's not a rift okay. at all. Um, it, it's not like that. Uh, I'm going to say you don't really know the reason why this is summoned. Okay. Um. I recall very little study on it. All I know is that it's usually a side uh, byproduct, as it were, of uh, darker magics of a more questionable Ice? nature. No, the there was a weird void-looking creature that just spotted us and decided what? to run off while you were laying on the ice. <laughs> Wrong, it's up. Um, <laughs> I'm glad void creatures is what it takes to get you to not do this, Thrall. Um, How scary was it? Uh, scale scary. of one to ten. Three foot wide. <laughs> uh, I'd say probably a solid... Uh, we fought Dajun probably like a good seven. Six. I'm putting it at nine. I don't want that thing to ever touch me. Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. That means that you're saying the only thing scarier than that thing would have been Daejin. <laughs> I'm not scared of Daejin. Um, I'm, 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 you don't I'm... have to be scared of something for it to be scary. <laughs> Neil, you're, uh, sorry, Raoul, you're totally fine. <laughs> yeah, I rolled a say. <laughs> I see that con yeah. check. <laughs> In any case, cross-eyed. <laughs> we should get moving before whatever it goes and runs off to tell that we're here catches back up with us. We can't run. There's ice. We will slip. Raul, you can run on water and you're worried about ice? It's just frozen water. Just do whatever it is you but do and run. More At the end of this kind of road um, where you saw this void creature disappear, uh -huh. you see this... It's Emil. He shows up like, hey, what are you guys doing here? Hey, you found my home. Um, no. <laughs> this is my vacation, my summer this, house. You see this very tall elven woman, uh -oh. except her features are kind of wrong. Uh -oh. um, her ears are much longer and much more pointed than they should be. Her hands and her fingers are just not proportioned correctly to her body. Mm -hmm. She is a very tall woman. Mm hmm she has very long, dark, flowing hair. She probably stands seven, eight feet tall. That's a big bitch. Yeah. She is wearing a kind of very pale blue cloak, and she obviously has magic about her. As you see, there are very heavy runes that are showing themselves on her skin. Can I insight if she's hostile? Go right ahead. She looks cold. Mm. She's kind of shivering. Mm -hmm. That's a 19 inside. That's a, like a 15 on what the are dive. You, oh, whether she's hostile? Yes. She is curious mm -hmm. and defensive, but she's not outright hostile. Uh. Uh, uh, we have company. 
Yes, and the only person who can talk to literally everybody is... The one lay on the ice. Yep, yep. He's gotten up. No, he Don't stood up. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> intentionally up. starting a fight pro. Sorry, sorry. I was... I, there, there are little lights swimming at the corner of my vision. I don't know if yes. that's... Zoltana, is that anger? Am I feeling I fury right now? Should I, I make another <laughs> con save? Are they red? Because if they are, you're about to rage. Oh, shit. No, 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 no. Calm demeanor, calm demeanor. Um, Squash is going to try real sneaky, like, to, well, like, disappear off. If this thing decides to blow everybody up, I don't want to be called. the <laughs> Oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I'm, I'm limiting um, the AOE potential. There's nothing to do with you. <laughs> not going to go down um, with the ship. Yeah, you can, you can attempt to hide. Sure. Do you want me to roll it or? Are you hiding in the ice area or are you hiding in like the rest of the buildings area? Are you hiding in a building? On where, where do you want to hide? So you, I was like, imagining. You're going to hide. Like she can't outsee your, your basic sneak. So uh, I'm at, I'm assuming that these are like a bunch of houses with very small gaps between them. Like maybe like a sultana wide gap between them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I'm, Im- I'm imagining Squash basically just is going to duck into one of those alleys and try to make it not obvious. Like, it, like she's not supposed to see Squash just kind of book it into an alley. It's more <laughs> of a very, like, casual, like, walks behind somebody and then, yeah. like... Yeah, I think that's definitely possible because, like, three, as far as she's concerned, three people with a wolf has just turned up out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, she definitely saw you. There's no uh, yeah, getting away from that, no. but you can definitely like hide from her view yeah, and yeah. it not be like too obvious. Yeah. Um, those of you who are still maintaining eye contact with her or at least seeing her, mm-hmm. um, you notice that she's kind of not walking. She's gliding across the ice. Um, it's not like she's skating. She's not even bothering to move her legs. She's just hovering along. Um, and she gets close. She's probably about 50 feet out. 40 feet out. Is the, is the 31 ice feet out. M- moving with her? Or is she... <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. Uh, good but morning. She stops about good evening. 31-ish feet out. What time is it? We're all waves. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. Uh, let's, say it's like, let's say it's midday. Uh, okay. Midday is probably a good, good amount. If you traveled most of the morning, so yeah. Um, she looks at the three of you and she looks at Lafian and she says in yeah she would she would speak um like really old school um common Mm. um like that's just clearly she's much older but she at least understands the gists of what are going on she can tell that you're from uh from Discora and she says hello good afternoon hi um (laughs) <laughs> I'm down, I want to know what you're doing yeah, I in my town. We are searching for the tomb of forgotten forgotten tombs heroes. We're looking for someone. The absolute well, no, tomb we're of looking heroes. for the passage that that. Who are you looking for? I'm confused about what we're looking for. <laughs> if you are confused, I would recommend you leave. We know what it is we're looking for. We don't know where it is. We were told it's generally somewhere down here. V, remind me because I had the thing. brain fart. What was it? So you're looking for the um, Tomb of Obsolete Heroes. That, was that it. should be a passageway to get you to whatever this underground complex where you think Liana is. Right. Tomb of the Obsolete Heroes. Okay. Are you the only one down here? My brother is here. My oh. pets are here. And you see, as she does this, she kind of like lifts her hands either side and you see these two void creatures just float up either side of like beside her like they come above the buildings that are either side of her there are two of them that's what I, I was telling you about by the way oh. uh. we're looking for the tomb of the obsolete heroes oh it's here that's reassuring 
Would you perchance be able to point us in the right direction and we'll be on our way? Well, that highly depends. Upon? Why are there four live people here in Belem? It's been a while since we've hosted live people. We're trying to save the world. <laughs> Aren't we all? No. You're not? No, I'm just saying I don't think everybody is trying to save the world. In fact, there's quite a few people that have tried to do the opposite while we're trying to do that. Hmm. Wait, who are you thinking about? We literally just fought somebody that is trying to do the opposite. Well, you know, we all want to change the world. <laughs> Now that's more along Dachin's line. Dachin wants to change the world. I just assumed he, like everybody, wanted to rule it has the been world. Noted. <laughs> Unnoted. Shit. Oh, I fucked up the joke. It's around here somewhere. Why are you for? Why break through the barriers that exist between the living and the dead? We have things to do, but we don't really understand a lot about how to explain them. Um, we also physically can't explain them. Yeah, so <laughs> Last we, we, time we are tried trying to stop things from happening that would be really bad. Um, and we need to find someone here, I think. Um, the, these things are from you know, important, powerful things that are sending us here to do these things. There are many important and powerful yeah. things and beings here in Red Rock Town. Apparently. No, what... We cannot say what we're doing because any time that we have done so before usually caused severe pain in whoever was hearing us say the things. So do you think I, who live here in Bellum, do not understand pain? That's not what I said at all. Yeah, you look uncomfortable. I had a friend who died from the cold like this. It's I, um, not great. Chilly. Probably, yes. Oh, you know what? We didn't ask your name. Um, what is it? I'm Zoltana, by the way. Uh, before you go, I want to say that when Squash hears her tone change, let's phrase it like that, uh, he goes into a little bit more patrolly mode. Like, okay, is there something else around here that I need to keep an eye on? Like, <laughs> uh, Your brother. <laughs> yep. Squash needs a sneaking theme. <laughs> um... Roll a perception check for me, please. Um, you won't need to roll sneak because neither of them can see past your base sneak. All right. Uh, Sorry, neither of them um, plus their two minions can, can't see past your basic sneak. 24 perception. That's it. Yep, I'll get back to you in a second. My name is Lillian Eventide, but my name has been in your physical plane. People would know me as Princess Annette. My brother being Killian. Do I? And I believe, yeah, you can roll for it. I History? know this. I know this. Uh, K Killian and the princess, or whatever that's called. Aethor, remind me because I'm probably. Uh, v uh, wrote a short little fantasy story, like a kind of a grim, a grim tale for Squash's backstory, where there was a story of a um, princess who was cursed, if I remember correctly. Was the princess cursed? And her yep. prince brother went out to try to find a cure, but I, f I think he got cursed finding a cure? I, I uh, yeah, he basically kicked the bucket and she cast soul fire and was super upset. And then she negotiated with the gods. She lost all of her magic, all of her sight. And he then came back to life. And that's the last that anyone ever knew about that story. She knows soul fire. Mm. Oh, oh, what would you look about? Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a short story that you can find, I think, in the bonus pages on the website. It's on the website. Yeah. Okay. Neil, leave this in. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, you can roll a history check to see if you know that story. Nat 20, 31. Yeah, clearly. Um, you recognize the names, um, but so far as the story that was told, the storybooks, like they were humans and things ended up fine. Um, yeah. Oh, I actually recognize your names then. Oh, in that case, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure is all mine. Uh, well, I suppose if you'd like to, I don't know, strike a bargain, then you tell us where it is that we need to be going. And depending on what it is you ask of us, see if it's something that we can do. If it's something you want, a uh, physical item, I've got wine. This is most uncivilized. Do you not think? What's that? Speaking here on the streets like common merchants. But us. Where is the other one? The very small one. I'm right here. <laughs> oh, you're cute, but no. Smaller than you. I think Squash is gonna like step out of the shadows. Let's not piss this thing off. Um, Squash just steps back in, like, um, I was just around the corner. Much better. Now I can see all of your lovely faces. Oh, fuck. Thank you. Let us find somewhere to sit and talk and partake in refreshments, not this gabbing on the street like commoners. Can I get an aura read? This sounds oh, this you can reeks try. of trap. No. Wow, rude, Laffian. This place doesn't reek. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. She's just being up a class. That's how you sound. <laughs> no, no, okay, listen. One does not carry that tone when inviting someone to dinner. Why did I just imagine Laffy just going to strangle Zoltana over that comment? <laughs> She's like, fuck it, stop it! <laughs> Zoltana's in the back like, ah, force choke! Ah, ah, what's happening? <laughs> that, it's, so it, because it's just, it's this non-ending barrage of like, ooh, our little prince doesn't know what privilege is, and it's just like, shut the fuck! <laughs> I'm trying to get an in with the cute princess. <laughs> You literally get you literally get to see your wife every like fucking week. Like, well, maybe we're Polly. Did you think to ask about uh, that? No, you have. This is the first time hearing of it. Let a bitch live. Listen, I'm just looking out for you. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to date the cute princess. I just want to flirt with her. Flirting is fine, and she's so cute. I'm fucking her. <laughs> Harmless flirting with the bad guy is totally fine. <laughs> Bad guys. <laughs> Concept. Bad guys are hot and I can fix her. Exactly. <laughs> Healing. <laughs> Why does this fucking scream, uh, what's her name from Resident Evil? Uh, I think I know who you referenced him, but oh, I've never played. Lady Dimitrescu. No um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, can I get, can I get Nora? Yeah, you can, you can try Nora, sorry, yeah. Okay. Try, it being the... 24. I have concerns. He is looking. What are you looking for? Any signs of deceit, of uh, ill intention? Oh, she has ill intentions. Uh -huh. Like, 100%. Okay. Um, she has ill intentions. Uh -huh. um, but she doesn't seem hostile. She doesn't seem like she's about to stab you any second now or, or set you on fire or, or freeze you to death. Um, she clearly is duplicitous. Uh -huh. oh, nailed that word. I got it. Yep. Nice. Um, she is clearly that. Um, she is clearly trying to suss out what the fuck you guys are doing. She's very curious. Mm -hmm. Like, this is new, and she hasn't made up her mind about what you guys are yet. Whether you are to be destroyed, mm -hmm. or helped, or both. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. What, is this, what does both mean? <laughs> She'll just have to ask her. No, thanks. 
<laughs> if you guys aren't picking up on it, uh, she is a little bit bellumed. She has died a couple of times, and it's fucked with her brain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. So she clearly. might genuinely attack us, and then once we've beaten her ass and she's back from the vortex, she's like, "All right, let's find the shortcut with you guys." <laughs> <laughs> Now my whole new woman. Yeah. Look at me. Um, she also yeah. quite literally has used questionable magics uh-huh. and flaunts Clearly. it. Probably oh, yeah. a side effect of losing your mind. Uh, you become less or something else careless, more careless. Anyway, um, weird question, V. Yeah. Uh, looking over this lady, do I see a black pin anywhere? Perception check. Oh, God. Oh, uh, investigation. Go for it. It seems more fair. 25. Nope. No, no, none whatsoever. Okay. Mm. It's a fair question. Yep. Very. It's a fair concern. <laughs> my, Very. <laughs> my gut feeling is that she is like a... Cuckoo for Cocoa tri- Puffs? Hair trigger, I think is the phrasing. Yeah. You don't want to yeah, give her that's an That's a very ex- good assessment, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to give her an excuse to attack us. But she's also cuckoo for cocoa pups as she said. So what <laughs> she might perceive as an excuse to attack us may not seem like one to us. So we I think we definitely do tread lightly. Because mm. I am 99% sure if I would not have stepped out earlier, she would have attacked. Mm. I, th- no that, idea what you're talking about. That's genuinely the 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 tone V took there. Like, where's the short one? In case it was like, <laughs> hey, I'm here. <laughs> I could like hear like the <laughs> from V, and you I'm could like, feel oh. the inner V coming through. Yep. yep. Oh, oh, the the attack's coming. The attack's coming. <laughs> Suddenly, three circle of deaths go off in every alleyway uh, nearby. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. You say death. I say reset. Uh. <laughs> I'll see you at the vortex, fuckers, as he nukes herself. See you at the vortex, honey. <laughs> Maybe she just really wanted to build a snowman with you. Oh, she can. Uh, Maybe she wants to turn us into icicles. Statues. You get the idea that, yeah, she's on a bit of a hair trigger. She hasn't made up her mind about you yet. Um, she may or may not be hostile. She hasn't decided. Um, but she definitely is nefarious. Um <laughs> Mm-hmm. Do with what you will. <laughs> you see her her um, wave her hand and you see the ice begin to kind of grow up from the ground as she makes what looks like a small table and five chairs of a, roughly the right height so that everyone can still see each other around the table. Um, she kind of gestures to it and you can see that as, she, as she's gesturing for you all to sit down, you can see that she is shivering like she is cold. Um, and in fact, when you are in this area, you do feel that cold. It is becoming quite intense. Uh, Squash is going to have a seat. Yeah, uh, Ralph will have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a seat near the seat I assume she's going to sit in, but because I really want to flag to the princess that I'm gay, I'm going to Riker sit in the chair. So like, essentially, if you've ever seen Star Trek, <laughs> uh, Riker sits in chairs by stepping over the back of them. It's impressive, and also, in my opinion, it's super queer-coded, because uh, we cannot sit in chairs properly. Like, literally, I'm sat with my legs over the arm of my desk chair right now. <laughs> oh, and anyway, I sit like that, and then I give her right. a nice smile. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she picks that up. <laughs> Essentially, I just really want to give the princess the signal that I'm gay. Yep. I am flirting yep. with her. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah. She's hot. I love Lady Dimitrescu. <laughs> yep, yep. Nothing that Zoltana does has ever been subtle, ever. Especially not so. in armor. <laughs> yeah, clearest signals could not be given. Um, There's lots of creaking, groaning of metal. Um, she 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 smiles, um, but she sits down in a chair next to yours. But she sits like a you know like a proper princess, like you know upright, you know legs tucked underneath her. But she is her body is turned towards yours. Um, oh man, that could mean anything. <sighs> Yeah, that don't mean, that don't mean nothing. Um, she says, let's say, the tomb of obsolete heroes, looking for someone, for something you cannot possibly talk to me about. What do you have to offer for my expertise while you're here in Bellum, my darlings? 
Mm-hmm. Why don't we roll it back a little bit? You've asked us a lot of questions. Why don't we ask you a couple? You're of in my home. You barged in without an invite, I might add. And I'm not throwing you out in your ear. And we I have ab- every right to ask all the questions in the world. Of course. I, I'm... I'm, I'm I was not gonna. I was not implying anything else. I was just wondering if you are the 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 princess from the story of Killian and the princess. I am. My brother is hereabout. <laughs> I I read your story a lot when I was younger. I I really liked it. I didn't really know if it was a fairy tale or history. I have. No idea whatsoever what fabrications and lies are in there about me, but some of it is true. They, for instance, say that you wield soul fire in the book. And she again, she kind of like points to and raises her hands and points to the two voids. I, I do. Mm. My pets forever remind me of such. Mm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, look at that. Now we know why they have those fucking things around. Um, <clears throat> um, it also said that you bargained with the gods. I might have kicked up a fuss or two. Yes. It was Clemdal, wasn't it? Clemdal. And you notice that she becomes uh, <laughs> uh, a little tense. And then she looks over at Ral, who is um, <laughs> <It's-> aciding himself. <laughs> Doing math, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who is mathing himself? Um, as Ral uh, fails a... the mention mm. of sulfur specifically. <laughs> yes, mention of sulfur. He, he didn't tell me that. Um, <laughs> Except for now, you see, uh, at yeah. the dinner table. You, 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 yeah, the dinner table. You see this kind of like. Yeah, a lot of mucus is is currently kind of making its way down your face and doing your best to like wipe it away. You're going to have to excuse my friend. He is very, very sick. It's not a contagious. I sure you only dragonborns could have this. <laughs> hmm. She kind of gets up. Um, she walks past Altana's chair, but you can tell that she's definitely leaned into the chair a bit. So you can just like almost feel her brushing be past and she goes over and she kind of like kneels down at uh Ralph's side and kind of puts a hand either side of his face and just kind of stares deeply into his eyes i think Ralph's says, instinct is definitely to like pun freeze up because the <laughs> last time he, the creature had soul fire that was the thing he had to do to not get soul fired <laughs> so he, he's um, like looking but he's Kind of hesitant. Yeah, to move her much. hands, her hands are incredibly icy. Uh, like it still looks like her flesh is is warm, but she is very, very cold to the touch, and you can feel her shivering. Um, and she says, "I can help a little with such things, if you wish." Yeah, um, that would be for Raul to decide. Um... What is it that you're suggesting, if I may ask? I can provide for you, Ral, at the name. Great. I can provide for you a little pep, a little boost in your step to overcome this whatever is going on with you right now. It'll heal up that chin a little, you know, make you feel somewhat better. Um... Okay. Um. I have to ask, is it dangerous? Is it dangerous? Of course not. It's a, a simple healing spell. I mean, nothing I can't afford to lose. And she kind of reaches over and she casts Cure Wounds on you. Okay. I was afraid she was going to go do weird things. Oh, I've turned him into an icicle. No more acid around here. <laughs> Nothing can hurt you now. Absolutely not, Never. darling. <laughs> Point blank, um, cone of cold. Yeah, yeah. I've frozen all the acid in his body. In his Rob body. Is 90% acid. You can't do that. <laughs> How could you insinuate that about the tall, hot princess? <laughs> um, she puts a hand on the side of your face. I wish she put her hand on my face. Um, 
And she cures you for 21 um, heals. Mm. You guys basically see just this ice flow from her fingertips and it just trickles its way down the chin. And as it kind of melts away, you see that some of the flesh has been healed um, where it touched. Well, smiles and there's clearly like a relief <laughs> in his expression. <laughs> uh, thanks. Yeah. Um, you are most welcome. I haven't quite decided if if you're my people yet. Um, she sits down again and she kind of like um, holds herself very upright, feet, feet underneath her. What do you have to trade for such information? I mean, information from information is one thing, but if you have goods or magics or uh, promises that you could keep. I've got fine of this wine. To... Oh, please. No. I've had quite enough of that. <laughs> Fair. You... You seem to be in a bit of pain. I am a little cold, yes. It's been some time since I thought, felt true warmth. Is it your magic that is hurting you? It's... Manifestation of what I am now. I never used to be this cold. I used to be very warm, actually. Consistently hot, covered in flames. But alas, that's gone to me now, and now it is only ice. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, <clears throat> I have um, an item that can suppress magic. If your own magic was hurting you, that might have been something of interest to you, but I guess not. Squash is gauging her if she's interested in it or not. <laughs> <laughs> that would be of use in my arsenal, so to speak. Mm. But not necessarily for me. I don't have a lot of things to give away, guys. What about a belt for cold? Nope. Nope. Wrong. I only have to make it through here and we can get another one. No, that's not how that works. She Paul. can't get one, though. Yeah, it is how that <sighs> works. I oh, can't sweetie. And she puts a hand like in the middle of the table. She's out to reach to you, but the table is a little bit too big. Um, it's like, oh, sweetie, no, honey, the cold is just cold. I it doesn't hurt me. Ice doesn't hurt me. Fire doesn't hurt me. It doesn't hurt, my darling. I'm just bloody cold. <laughs> okay. Oh. Hey. Do you guys have anything warm? I can give you a hug with seeds? a fire elemental for a little bit, but that's about it. Make a persuasion roll, Lafian. I'm going to use a point of luck. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, what was that, Squash? Ah, oh, there we go, 24. Thank you, luck. I would be... Very interested in that. Shall we call it a bargain? Um, yes, all right. That seems like a willing to try anything. Anything that kills me will only make me stronger, so. Funny, it's the one plane of existence where that is a very valid thing that you can say. <laughs> I'm afraid the same can't be said for the four of you, though. It's all right. We've made it this far with uh, the strength we have. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, describe summoning it. Just take off the, the points. Um, oh, okay. all right. Yeah, he probably just like stands up from the chair. Just in case. And uh, just a little off to the side, just kind of like snaps a finger and like a little tornado of fire comes up from the ground. And uh, when the tornado dissipates, there is a fire elemental standing there. Um, she kind of gets up and she goes over and she just gives it a hug. And you can see it like very awkwardly, like put its arms around her, like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Um, <laughs> you could just see that happening. Um, and it's very strange to see fire not melting ice. Um, but you can see like ice forming on her back and such like. But she seems to be like making the happy noises. Um, and she releases the releases the fire elemental and she has a bit of a smile on her face. She's like, hmm. Yes, I really rather like that. So, um information for information. 
The Tomb of the Obsolete Heroes. What a name. Rather peculiar one, I thought. <laughs> Indeed. So, unlike what most people would think, the tomb is not in that temple. And she gestures to the, the domed temple that's really close by. Oh, no, 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 please. That's far too ridiculous. I had that moved years ago. It's... You see the building over in the far corner there? There's um, lots of pillars, library of sorts. Mm -hmm. Obsolete history. I thought it was quite funny to put it in a library. So you'll find the entrance over there. That's rather clever. I enjoy the, the word play there. Thank you. Thank you. And she kind of does this like half curtsy thing. <laughs> um, Thank you, guys. I could not muster up the, the, <laughs> the fake courtesy to praise her on that. <laughs> All right. Well, my lovelies, after such a wonderful trade of, wow, certainly an experience. Thank you for that. How about I walk you over to the library and, um, actually, who are you looking for? Perhaps it's me. It's not you, though. We're glad we ran into you. Hmm. Yeah. It's not every day I see such a uh, cute and handsome adventurers. Uh, <laughs> now we're looking for a uh, halfling human. This has been a debate behind the scenes. Just use her name. No, <laughs> I'm going to use her race. <laughs> she's a she's a she's a human. Yes, uh, we're looking for a human that we knew in life. I hope you need a little bit more than that. Uh, Liana. 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 Oh, Liana. Yes. Yes. As I look at my notes and realize I put halfling everywhere because I'm a dumbass. <laughs> yes, Liana. <laughs> Can we just. She comes from a very <laughs> noble line. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can we just say that Liana is just a fucking changeling? Just. Change. No. Liana's a change. She's a very short human, and nobody knows what the fuck she really is. <laughs> she doesn't care, nor should she. Her mom um, was a halfling. Her dad was a human. <sighs> Stop it. You're going to have to make a definitive um, decision here in about she's, she's you know, an episode no, or whatever. She's human. <laughs> it's fine. She's human. Um, this is fucking cow and chicken. <laughs> well, how about I walk you over to the library and. I'll talk to you about all the things I know. And she kind of like snaps her fingers and you feel the chairs and the table around you begin to melt. Um, enough warning so that you can stand up and not fall to your butt unless you really want to. Um, but she does that and she begins to like step away from the ice. And as soon as she steps off the ice, um, you can tell that she is definitely becoming to be covered in ice. Her, her fingers, her face, her clothing all just kind of get that snowflake effect um, all over her. Um, and she turns... Yes. The fire elemental is going to stick around for a bit if you'd like to uh, carry it with you while we're walking, then. Oh, no, it's okay. I have the memories. It's fine. Thank you for that. Um, you can do as you wish. Whatever. Um, yeah, that's a good protector. Where so was I? With us. Liana. Liana. Right. Yes. So, interesting story about Liana. She's the latest in a very powerful family. Two, actually. Um, yes, you'll probably find her probably within the tombs. <laughs> How fortunate for you all. Is she... She didn't die in, in our time too long ago, but here it's probably been a while. Is she different than we would remember? Yes. I mean, she was rather fresh-faced when she turned up here. Um, slipped right past me. I barely even saw her, but I, I saw that little zip through the tomb's defences. Just a little ping on my little radar. My brother was most pissed off, but hey, <laughs> that's not his choice. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. She, yes, probably 30, 40 years ago, some such. There probably won't be another replacement for oof, hundreds of years, I shouldn't have thought. Replacement for what? For Liana. What is she doing? What does she need a replacement for? 
Do you know what? I never thought to ask. Of course I do. Of course I know. Ah, uh, she's doing something about protecting the planes and holding a portal closed and every now and then somebody else from her great family line steps in to replace such a person. I mean, can I only imagine the toll it takes? I mean, I've died a fair few times. Imagine having to be in pain consistently for hundreds of years. I mean, that'll drive anyone nuts. So they have someone replace them every now and then. Hmm. Right. You mentioned defenses. Mm-hmm. Are they your defenses or just the... Oh, some of them are mine, but the rest of them are Liana's family. Aha. Uh-huh. I see. It's not polite to ask about a lady's defenses. She says as she attacks us. Well, I mean, listen, it's a fair <laughs> question. I'm sure that the lady's defenses are by far the better. <sighs> Oh, too kind. Such flattery. Hollow flattery, but wonderful nonetheless. I do appreciate it. I've spent my fair share of time at the courts. I know how it goes. <laughs> oh, yes, you do have the look of nobility about you. Tall, proud, carry yourself as if you don't have a care in the world. <laughs> Let me look at your hands, darling. <laughs> he holds a hand up. See... You can tell a lot from a person's hands, can't you? Your hands, soft, lovely. This lovely young dwarven lady in front of me, I'm assuming, has very calloused hands. <laughs> it's... Somebody clearly works for a living. Callous from working, sure, but they're surprisingly <laughs> soft where it counts. Uh, <laughs> well. The two of you. At this point, she kind of like lifts her hands um, and presents forward, and you can see that you're actually at the steps of the library now. Um, you can see that along the steps there are a multitude of statues that go up, um, and there is a single door at the top, but it doesn't have a door handle. And she says, well, when you're finished, if you get through this alive, if you, even if you die, I mean, eventually I'll probably see you again anyway, um, you get through this live, just Pop back and say hello. I'd, I'd love to see how you got on and how, what you thought of our dear Liana. Oh, you will definitely be seeing me again. You better be. I very much look forward to it. Anyway, toodaloo, my loves. Mm. And she kind of like does a little hand wave and she goes back to where she came from. Hi everyone, it's V here. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I am enjoying the hell out of being in Bellum. <laughs> uh, anyway, ignoring that. Um, thank you so much for listening. Um, I would like to thank one of our newer patrons, Hunter Preston. Thank you so much. You basically help us keep the lights on around here and replace equipment. And yeah, patrons are amazing. And thank you so much, Hunter. I also want to thank um, Gentle Chap, who gave us the name Mulga, and Lily, who gave us the name Lillian. Um, which appeared somewhere in this episode. You're also going to hear an ad for Red Odyssey, which is a new audio drama that came from um, Sarah Golding. Sarah Golding is amazing. Um, Sarah Golding was obviously on the Healer episodes and also the voice of Githa in um, the, well, back in episode 1551, uh, when we had the crossover episodes with um, Dark Dice. So Sarah is a beautiful human. Go listen to their new show, Red Odyssey. Red Odyssey. Uh, Sorry about that. And otherwise... Y'all have a great festive season and enjoy yourselves. Be good. Bye. I was 13. I herded lambs beyond the village on the lee. The magic of the sun, perhaps, or what was it, affected me. I felt with joy all overcome, as though with God. Rover operator Ilya Zakharov, authorization number 00461 of the Lunar Agricultural Expedition Program. The time for lunch had long passed by, and still among the weeds I lay, and prayed to God, I know not why. It was so pleasant then to pray. Phantom 9, initialize. But not for long the sun stayed kind, not long in bliss I prayed. Phantom 9 initialized. It turned into a ball of fire and set the world ablaze. As though just wakened up, I gaze the hamlet drab and poor. And God's blue heavens, even they, 
are glorious no more. Ilya! Don't let it see you! From Denouncer Media comes a brand new experience in audio horror. Red Odyssey. Starring Alison Cossett, Peter Wicks, Sarah Golding, Erica Sanderson, James Scully, Peter Wyshynski, and Brandon Levine. Red Odyssey, a Lovecraftian horror story you will never forget. Coming September 8th, wherever you get your podcasts.